now tuned in to the Lady Charmaine Live Show, and I'm your host, Lady Charmaine, and as always, I got another great interview for you today, and I'll tell you who it is coming up right after this. My guest today rose to fame as a contestant on BET Sunday Best. She blew us all away with her three octave contralto voice. She is a stellar award nominee and she is here today to talk about her dual singles. Help me welcome to the Lady Charmaine Live Show, Miss Latisse Crawford. Welcome to the show. Hey everybody, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you good. I can hear you real good. So I'm glad to have you on the show today. So how have you been over there on the East Coast? I know you're in Pennsylvania. So how are you quarantining? I'm trying to stay stay as productive as possible. I definitely won't stay trying to stay busy. I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting rest, relaxation, but that I'm also staying creative. But I just want to be productive, you know, not just a professional busybody, but making sure that the things that I'm doing are producing results and some products that will help me, you know, get back on the grid when this is all over. I know that's right. You So you're taking advantage of all your quarantine time, which we all should yes. be doing. I think I call it God's time. He gave us some time to get some things together, get our lives lives together to reset regroup and then go back back out there and become reactive in this world with some new ideas fresh ideas and god ideas so i'm really excited exactly. about this time <laughs> about this time I know yeah, you, me too. yeah you told me your family are you're from new york yeah, I'm originally from New York, from the Bronx, New York, and I lived in Queens, and I'm my stomping grounds in Brooklyn, though, although I was living in Queens. I was always in Brooklyn at church or at concert or something else. Yep, but that's where I'm from. I'm a New York girl. Okay, now, did you ever go to the Brooklyn Tabernacle? Yes, I have. Uh, we were there all the time. They used to have some of the best concerts. And, you know, we used to be there. And, you know, the church, uh, I'm, I'm Pentecostal, so we didn't go, you know, to the club. And, you know, to, we didn't get to have all that other stuff. So that was our club. It was called Christ. Right, so we right. were there, <laughs> you know, <laughs> party and says, you know, praise God to 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, you know. And we got the breakfast thing was the best. You know, we had James Hall and Hezekiah Walker and mm-hmm. Danny Easton and, you know, Carl Tom, Carl Jackson. I call Thomas. We had we, they had called Thomas. We had called Jackson. <laughs> and we used to have you know some of the best choirs you know in New York, and we would just bump. You know, the whole right, night, as long right. as they're everybody starting falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but we had Club Jesus. I mean, that was, those were the days when we was in church to 2 o'clock in the morning, yeah. 3 o'clock in the morning. You was getting your praise on, and That's you walked right. out of there sweating as if you had been in the club. <laughs> Right, but then you had to make sure you was at church on Sunday. And you can't go to Club Jesus no, no, and no. not show up to church on Sunday. Well, <laughs> and you had to be church. in Sunday school. <laughs> right, Sunday school, first service, and second service. These young kids don't know about second service. We had two services and Sunday school. Okay, <laughs> had a special 3 o'clock service, had to have some chicken dinners over in the, ch- right. in the church social hall. You go, right, you go right back to service. Part. They don't know about that, right? <laughs> Tell what you know about that. You don't know nothing about that. <laughs> you know, a good hour service, and that's about it. Back Back then, we was in church for hours, oh, sung 15 million so songs. <laughs> I'm telling you, and the Lord just had his way, and you just, you just had to sit there and take it as long as Jesus was going. <laughs> right, right. Well, we all know you from Sunday Best. You auditioned for Sunday Best, and you made it onto the show. So I want to go back to that process for how we all knew you. Uh, why did you even decide to even audition for Sunday Best? Did somebody encourage you, or did you just see the show one day and be like, you know what? I think I can do that. I honestly went on the show to make everybody leave me alone about singing. Um, mm-hmm. I think some of these were just assumed because I, you know, could sing that it was like, oh, you should want to be a singer. You know, it's kind of like if you're skinny, you should be a model. Right. If you're tall, you should be a basketball player. It was kind of that thing. Like, this piece, you know, you sing, this is what you do. This is what you've been doing. You've got to be a singer. And so I went on the show to kind of prove them wrong, you know, to be like, hey, these people are not going to like my voice and the, the raspiness and all this other stuff. And I went there and was, surprised that they did um I, don't, I still don't think even after the show that I realized that you know being a singer was going to be such a huge part of my, my life and my journey um I thought I was just you know gonna go up there and go back to my regular job and um that did not happen 11 years later here I am, now, here I am. <laughs> so, so tell us how did your life change from that moment my life changed in every way you know I'm a, I'm a hermit 
And, um, you know, so I like to just kind of be in my own space. And contrary to many people's beliefs, as much as a people person as I am, I'm very shy. And so, you know, like I said, just like after gigs, I like to crawl into my hole. But now, you know, my life is on such a public scale. And not even as, as, as public as some of my peers, you know. Mm-hmm. Their lives are very, very public. Um, but still even just, you know, the little spotlight that I have from time to time, it's a lot. You know, right. when you have people constantly judging everything you do, scrutinizing, oh, you can't say this, or you can't post that, or you can't do, you know, I remember when me and my manager first started working together, um, she she was heavy on the marketing side, mm-hmm. and so if I would post something that was a little risky, or, you know, not, I wasn't looking crazy, but just even if I said certain things, she'd go, hey, you know, that might not be a good post, and we used to fight all the time, like, I'm a human being, I just <laughs> want to say what I want to say, right. you know, and we would, you know, I mean, you know, playful fights, but just, you know, her trying to make sure she was protecting me. Right. And so it's very difficult, you know, when you can't say certain things or you're afraid to post up pictures of your son because you're not sure, you know, people don't have something to say or mm-hmm. just things in your life. So I think that public thing, but also my time, you know, having to constantly be on the go, constantly, you know, creating, you know, different things and products and, um, you know, all of that changed. Working for myself, you know, all, all of that changed. Now, you said creating products. What products do you create? Um, You know, just more so making sure that your social media pages are always mm-hmm. up to par and, you know, that there's always something up there, you know, a picture right. of something or that you're, you know, singing somewhere or writing something. I think, you know, this industry definitely makes you feel like you have to be busy all the time. That's mm-hmm. what I'm enjoying this time right. of us all kind of being on the same playing field. Right. Where, you know, we can just be creative because it's fun. Nobody's in competition. Nobody's trying to get, you know, the first gig. Right. Everybody's really just finally for once enjoying their craft again. You know, right. and I think for a while I lost mm-hmm. that because I was so busy just trying to make sure I was staying, you know, on, on, you know, at the same level as everybody else. But now I actually get to have fun and go sing on social media and, you know, still strategy, you know, to it, but just getting to enjoy my craft again. Now, you know, your music is so inspirational and you have a song that just really touched my heart. First, I love the song Choose Me, but it's a song that you have. It says, look at yourself again please tell me what place that that song come from did you work did you write it or did someone else write it because the song is so beautifully written wow thank you i did write it my Mm. mom had given me a card and um in the card i actually just saw it the other day my mom passed away march 1st before all of this stuff happened with covid um and i was you know back then but i just found the card again the other day and it took me right back to the same place my mom had sent me given me a card for i think my birthday or something and she was just saying you know i know that life you know at times has beaten you up or you had felt like you had to go through more than some other people you know but it's all adding towards your ministry and anytime you think that you're not enough or you think that you don't have what it takes or you don't have this look at yourself again and she would always say that to me you know don't mm-hmm. don't worry about what you look like when you first looked in the mirror go back and look again and she's like and go see what god sees about you first time you kind of see what you feel about yourself and what everybody else is saying she said but go back again and see what god says about you and so you know that's where the the, the lyrics to the song kind of came from what does he see mm. you know or what do you see when you're looking at yourself and you're saying all these things but you're created you know in age. what does he see about you and what does he say about you Beautiful. I, I mean, when that song comes on and you have another song, that's my jam there. Now I'm not, I, I don't know why I try to sing when singers come on. I'm not a singer, but y'all just make me want to sing. <laughs> and then your song, choose me. But your songs, I mean, the, the lyrics in the songs, they just resonate and they speak to you. You know, I mean, I can go all through your albums and be like, tell me about this song and tell me about this song and we'll be here all day. <laughs> you know, but because the, the lyrical content have so much meaning and you could see yourself in those songs. I mean, literally, it's like it's like you were reading our stories, like you just all up in our business, wow. you know, and, and that's how your music <laughs> does. Because, I mean, I play when I'm in the house of when I'm sitting down, I'm doing some work and just the messages, they just minister to me like you're talking to me. That's what you, your, your writing kind of reminds me of um, Jonathan McReynolds. And it's like when wow. I listen to his music, you know, it just really, really speaks to me. You know, like when you talk about, we you know, with the pimples on my face, he keeps loving me or even his new song, People, you know, just being delivered mm-hmm. from people, period. You know, and just like, don't look at them, be delivered from them, all kinds of people. And so that's that's what yeah. you remind me of, that connection that I have with your music and the stories. Even Jay Moss is like that, too. You know, just the stories that you're like, man, 
that's me all day. There's nothing like gospel <laughs> music that literally yeah, speaks to your spirit that's life changing. So I just want to say thank you for allowing God to use you. I appreciate that. And with us talking about your music, let's talk about your dual singles that you have coming out. Let's talk about those. So tell us about them. Yeah, I have. I have. Amazing is already out. Amazing's been out for a couple of months now. So if you guys want to get that, you can get that right now. It's available. You can, you know, multitask on your phone while you're listening <laughs> to this, wherever you're listening to it, and go order it. It's called Amazing by Latrice Crawford. Not Latrice. I love her, but I don't. She's not me. Right. L A T I C Crawford. But something, something is coming out on May 29th, and it'll be available for pre-order on the 15th of May. Um, something, something is basically talking about how we're all out there looking for something. Mm-hmm. We don't know what that something is. We're trying to figure it out. It could be love. It could be prosperity. It could be success. It could be happiness, whatever it is. But you need the something of all somethings to get it. It's kind of comparing medicine to the cure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that medicine runs out. You know, right. you keep trying to use that so it sustains you for a little bit but then you have to go back to it. However, the cure sustains you forever. You don't have to keep going back and searching and looking. So something, something is, you know, it, it, it's very uh, human first. You know, um, I always tell people, the song for me, when I was in certain relationships, to me, that person was the equivalent of the devil himself. I, I don't know what in the world's wrong with you, but for me, you know, it was about love and me wanting to have someone, you know, like, well, that's what God said in his word, but I should. I'm somebody's rib. Well, you know, whose rib am I? And we found a find that and figuring that out, but realizing that the reason why it doesn't happen is because every time I get very distracted and I put all of everything into that person and I take everything away from God. God. And so, again, went to the pill, but he's like, come to the cure. You come in me, you won't need nothing else. Mm. That's that's extra. That's nice. So, you know, I think all of my songs, you know, thank you for your, your, your compliment as well. Um, You're welcome. You know, all of my songs... I try to make sure I'm very intentional about making making sure they're full of symptoms, mm-hmm. you know. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you like, let's take this this COVID nineteen thing. Every time somebody coughs, they like, oh no, what is that? Let me go look up the symptoms and see what this is. Because now mm-hmm. I'm coughing. They said the first thing is a cough. <laughs> right. So they go and they look them up. And after they do, either they see, or maybe I might have it, or you know, what because of the like symptoms. Mm-hmm. And then they go and look for the way that the person, you know, got better. And so, you know, I always say that I want for my music to be like that full of symptoms so that the believer and non believer can see something in it and then say, Well, wh- wh- how did she get better? Mm-hmm. What was her cure? What was her source? And then they'll use what I use, which is God. Oh, oh hey now, there you get that's it all day. <laughs> he is the healer, <laughs> he is the cure. Praise God. <laughs> Now, now, reading, I heard, I read that you are a middle child. So what is it like be, being the girl in the middle? You're not the oldest, you're not the youngest, you know, you're not like the older girl or the baby girl. You're just in the middle. What is that experience like? Um, Interesting growing up. Um, I, I, I'm telling you, I, <laughs> even though this isn't what I wanted to do, I'm pretty sure that it was what I was destined to do. <laughs> because even as a kid, I would take my teddy bears and stuff, and my sister would look at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and I would take my stuff in, and I would put, perform whole shows. I mean, I was every character, mm. you know, and I mean, full out plays and musicals. I wanted to be in theater, you know, so mm-hmm. full out plays, full out musicals and stuff with me and my stuffed animals, my teddy bears and my dolls. Um, you know, so being a middle child was very interesting. I think that because, you know, you got the, the oldest and she's got the responsibility and then you got the youngest and she's kind of, you know, the little daddy's girl or whatever mm-hmm, she needs to mm-hmm. be. I think it kind of gave me a lot of space to figure out who I was mm-hmm. and who I wanted to be. I was very independent, you know, as a young kid. Um, just, you know, figure out life. I got to live a lot more life than my sisters did. I feel, you know, just even in the relational aspect, um, you know, out in the work, just I, I, I feel like that I got to experience a little bit more because it wasn't so much attention and eyes, you know, on me, you know, where, and like I said, they were a little bit more, no, you're a baby. So you got, and you're the oldest, mm-hmm, so you got to do mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, it, it wasn't bad. You know, like most people say they have middle child syndrome. Mm-hmm. For me, it wasn't bad. You know, I was a mom's girl, you know, my mom was my person, you know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, it wasn't like, you know, like it was anything bad or anything. Just interesting. Right. It's just <laughs> interesting. Now, I read that you were also in a reality show. What reality show? Yeah, I was in a reality show um, right when I got off of Sunday Best. Um, it was, um, you know, about my relationship at the time. That is no longer. And so, you know, Was it on, it was on TV? <laughs> it was on television? 
It was on TV. It was on, I believe it was on Centric, I think. I don't even remember. That was so long ago. It was about maybe 11 years ago. Because oh. um, it was like right after Sunday Best. I've been off of Sunday Best for 11 years. Yeah. So it was a long time ago. It doesn't seem <laughs> like it's been 11 years. It does not seem years. like it's been that long. When, yeah. When you it's say the number. <laughs> yes, it's, it's definitely been a long time. So I want to know, when, when you're not busy, okay, it's not quarantine time, what can we find you doing? Um, when I'm not busy or quarantine, I'm somewhere either between the road, you mm -hmm. know, um, doing music or working or in the studio. Um, but when I'm home, even when I'm not quarantined, I'm usually in my kitchen somewhere. I'm a cook. I wanted to be a chef when I was younger. Um so I'm always in there, you know, creating something and making something. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I mean, I like to do simple things. You know, like I said, I'm somewhat of a hermit. So mm -hmm. I'm usually, you know, at a movie or a spa or something, something that's really quiet, okay. you know, museum. You know, I'm, I'm usually doing something like that. Nothing too loud, not too many, you know, crazy on a rooftop somewhere. You know, like I said, I love anything that kind of quiet and point where I can think and be in my thoughts. Um, you know, I think a lot of people may not really understand when we're on the road, you know, as fun as it looks from the outside in, we're working, you know, so it, it can be very draining because, you know, we're up certain times of the morning and then mm -hmm. not going to sleep until certain times of the night. We're away from our families mm -hmm. a lot, which for me is my energy. I'm a mom. My son is nine. So, you know, um, being away from him a lot, you know, being away from family, mm -hmm. missing, you know, when my mom like fell really ill and they were like giving her, you know, a time span, I was mm -hmm. away in Nashville recording videos, you know, so you miss so much. So when I come home, I really try my best to refill me right. so that I can fill, you know, other pour out, you know, and pour into other people. Wow. Okay. Well, I see. So Latisse, what would, 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 excuse me, what would be some last words that you would leave to someone to encourage them in whatever they're going through? I've heard you mentioned about a relationship that you were in at the time. You recently lost your mom. I know what that's like because I lost my mom almost three years ago. So what would be wow. a word that you would leave with them? I would just say you got, you're going to get through it, but you got to go through it first. You know, it's, it's a process. It takes time. You know, give yourself that time. The Bible gives you permission to. It says to everything, there's a season. So live your seasons out. Um, every season is your season. It's just different weather in each of them. So let them prepare you. Let them equip you for what you have to go through for your next. Don't stay stuck there. Hey, amen to that. And Latisse, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. And I want to remind the audience to make sure that you go online and download her song. I believe you said it's amazing. So amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, go make sure you download that and make sure you go and pre-order her song by May the 15th. Give us a website. If there's a one-stop shop that they can go to, what's your website? One-stop shop, LatisseCrawford.com. You guys can find it on my social media sites, but you have to look for Latisse Crawford. Y'all like putting that demon R in there. It's not <laughs> there. It doesn't exist. It's invisible. It is L-A-T-I-C-E Crawford. <laughs> so y'all don't put that demon R in there. So y'all make sure. Yeah. Don't put that demon R. <laughs> <laughs> well, Latisse, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. And it was definitely a pleasure having you on the show. And I look forward to having you back. Thank you so much. You're welcome and have a blessed day. Bye-bye. You too.